you should have the chance to do that later after the class. Okay, the lecture now is being recorded. And now we just move on to the whiteboard to just start the lesson. Guys, we are gonna talk about, I should say, the inverse of a function. But in order to talk about the inverse of the functions, I'm just gonna start from a general approach that you do not only talk about the inverse of a quadratic function that you can think of and be able to just start to think about the inverse of any, any functions that you can find in the field of the mathematics. But before we talk about, I should say, the inverse of the lectures, I'm, I'm just gonna talk about, uh, this is gonna be talk about the inverse of the functions. However, before we talk about the inverse of the functions, I have to talk about the composite of functions, which is necessary to talk about this first before we talk about the inverse of the functions. Okay, what, what do I mean when we talk about, I should say, the composite functions? What is that and what does it mean? Look at that. I'm just gonna start with this very basic formula. Let's start from the composite of the functions. Let me talk about this one first. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm just gonna introduce a single variable function, which is gonna be, let's say, for example, I'm just gonna come up with any arbitrary function which is gonna be, for example, x, let's say, for example, 5x plus two, right? And I come also here to talk about another function. I say the another functions which I have, it's gonna be the g of x. I say that the g of x is gonna be square root of the x plus, for example, plus x, minus one. Okay, that's gonna be a functions of the g of x. Okay, and now I have these two functions. One of them is uh, polynomials of degree one with the leading coefficients of five. And the other one is not a polynomial functions because the square root of the x, it doesn't make of g of x a polynomial functions. Now, the thing which I want to do, just give me one second, please. Sorry, I had to check out something. I came back here now. Okay, the thing which I want to do is this. Look at this one, the whole thing which I have. The, for example, I just come here and say, guys, Please take a look at g of x. Uh, imagine that f of x that I have here is a function that f of x is one of swallow. By swallow, I mean eat g of x. Now the course that now we're gonna run here is gonna be a little bit dangerous a function is gonna eat another function. What do I mean? I come here say that imagine if f of x is gonna eat g of x, look at this one here like that. Look at the parentheses inside of the f of x. It's gonna act as the stomach of f of x. What does it mean? when it means that when the functions f of x is coming to eat the g of x, this g of x goes all the way inside the stomach of the f of x. What does it mean? It means that, for example, f of x, but instead of having x inside, you are gonna have g of x inside. Because why? Because f of x swallowed G of X 
It grabbed the byte of the g of x, like the snake, swallowed all the functions g of x. What does it mean? It means that I can write it here like that. I can write f of g of x. Let me go back. What does it mean f of g of x right now? I have the g of x, which is swallowed by f of x. How the g of x is, how the f of x should look like now? It means that g of x is going to change itself. Look at this function f of x, the original one which I had. I said that the transformation of the x is going to be 5 times x plus 2. You see that? Now imagine that if I say something like that for the f of g, for the f of x. If I say f of x is 5x plus 2, if I say what's going to happen to f of an apple, I, instead of the x, I put an apple inside the function. What it means? It means that any x which you have is going to change to an apple. It means that I walk along the function, wherever I see x, I'm just going to put an apple for it. You see that? Plus two. It's the funnest example ever of a function of an apple. It means that wherever we see x, we put an apple in there. Does it make sense to everyone? Yeah. Now, what do I do if I have something like that? Instead of have, having an apple, which we talked about that on the previous one, instead I have g of x. It means that, like the thing which I did before, I can walk along the function, and wherever I see x, I do not replace it with the apple, I replace it with the g of x. It means becomes what? It becomes five times of g of x plus two. Does it make sense to everyone? Yes. Fantastic. And now the question is that, okay, you're telling me f of g of x is going to be five times of g of x plus two. But probably Robin is going to come and say that, okay, why should I write g of x mysteriously here as long as I know what is g of x? Because in the problem which I had, we said that we know what is the g of x. g of x is given explicitly just right in front of us. Then what do I do? I say, okay, no problem, Robin. I'm just going to come here, put five here. And instead of g of x, which is like the Zorro mask, which it keeps a kind of a mysterious nature to the g of x function, I'm just going to replace it with the full function of the g of x. What is g of x? In that case, the g of x which I have is given to me is going to be a square root of the x plus x itself minus 1. Right? And I know still I can continue because I can see that it's plus two is gonna be come at the end of that function. And now you can continue that. You can see that you have the plus sign here. You can take five inside the parentheses and simplify that functions further. In case if you want, then it means that you can write it as five times square root of x plus 5x. You have 5 times minus 1 becomes minus 5. Then you have 1 plus 2 at the end. It becomes minus 5 plus 2 means becomes minus 3. Does it make sense, everyone? Yes. Is everyone clear with what I did? Yes, it's clear. Awesome. Thanks. And now, this way, to show that the f, the g that is swallowed by, I should say, by the g, there is a 
interesting mathematical notation. I can show this one. I can show this one instead of showing that, for example, f, which has a swallowing, I should say, which has a swallowing g of x. I can write it in that way that it becomes what? That it becomes f. I, I, I show that by this sign, small o, and I show the g here. This one, it means that this is a composite function, which is the composite function means a function of a function. It means that the function swallows at all another function. Then. Okay, any questions so far? No. No? Everyone is fine? Yes, it's fine. Awesome. Okay, now I'm just going to go to the next page. Unfortunately, I have to write again the functions which I had. What was my f of x? 5x minus 2. And also I had the g of x. It was the square root of x plus x minus 1. These are the functions which I worked on the previous example. Guys, on the previous example that I had, you saw that f of x seemed that it was too strong. f of x swallowed g of x. And now imagine what's going to happen that f of x, now g of x is going to swallow f of x. It's the opposite directions that we took before, huh? It means that now the thing that, the, the, the thing that I have right now is that I should have right now here, I have G, which has swollen, I should say, has eaten what? F of X. On the previous example that I showed that to you, you said F of G of X, and g of x was inside the stomach of the f of x. Now here is the ex opposite thing. Now we have f of x, which is, I should say, which is inside the stomach of g of x. Now, what's going to happen now? I, I think we, should, we can probably follow the same procedure. What does it mean? It means that we just start from the g of x. And wherever I see, for example, I, I, I just bring that example once more. Imagine g of an apple. What is that going to be? It becomes the square root of, you walk along, I should say, the line. Wherever you see x, you put an apple there plus an apple minus one. You see, it's very easy. You see that whatever comes inside the stomach of the G, you replace any TX with that thing. The same story is going to be here. I have the FGF of X inside the stomach of the G of X. It means that I'm just going to walk along, I should say, for example, it's going to be me here. I'm going to walk in that direction. Whenever, whenever I see the x, I'm going to replace it with the f of x. It means that that is going to be, I should say, the square root of. Instead of x, I put that f of x. Then I have plus. Again, I see another x. Then it's going to be another f of x. Minus 1. Is it clear for everyone what has happened there? Yeah, it's clear. Is it good? How about Ramin, Allison, Diana, and Bo? Is it clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, it's clear. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay, now, what's going to happen? Again, probably right now, Allison comes to ask me, why you do not replace f of x with the exact form of the f of x? because I have a, a clear cut 
representation of the f of x, then why keep it mysterious here? I say, no problem. I can write it in that way. I can come here and say, okay, it's going to become the square root of the f of x was what? 5x plus 2 plus my f of x is going to be what again? 5x plus 2 minus 1. Let's see if we can simplify that further just for fun. Still, it's going to be square root of, I should say, 5x plus 2. I have plus 5x. And I have plus 2. Look at these two last terms which I have. I have plus 2 minus 1, which it brings it to become what? To become plus 1. Okay, now. This is, it seems that I cannot continue that further, but right now, this one, as you noticed, this is g of f of x. Now, f of x now is in the stomach of the g. We can write it in the mathematical notations as g o and comes here the functions which is inside the stomach of the f. It means that g o f is a composite function of f with g. Okay, anyone, any questions? No. No, everyone is doing fine? Yeah. You got the concepts, huh? What is a composite function? Okay, before we move on, I'm going to give you one, one example that you please you do that on your own. Please, guys, have a neat piece of paper and do this one, please. Let me find an example. I'm going to say that, okay, I have one function, which is going to be f of x. f of x is going to be 4 divided by x and I have also one g of x the g of x is 1 over x minus 5 these are the things that we have please guys spend a couple of minutes find the two way composite functions of f and g Then we come back to continue with the, with the new lesson that you have to do this for today then. And please let me know whenever you are done. Okay, anyone is done now? I'm done. Fantastic, Tom. And how about the others? Maybe in one minute we can just start to working out together. Come back in a second. Okay, now let's do that together. In case if you haven't finished that, 
Please follow see what I'm going to do right now. We finish it together then. Okay, the first thing which I'm going to do, I'm going to assume at this stage, f of x is going to swallow and eat f of x, which it means that I have f of x, which inside f of x, I'm going to have g of x. What does it mean? It means that I'm just going to walk along f of x, and wherever I see x, I put what? g of x. Because look at that, g of x, f of x has an x here, and instead of the x, I put g of x. What is that going to be? Is that going to be like that? I say, okay, I keep the 4 there, and the g of x which I have is going to be 1 over x minus 5. x minus 5 is the g of x. Then if you simplify that, you see that it turns out to be 4 times, it becomes the inverse of it comes up, becomes 4 times x minus 5. Then I'm just going to write that as f o g. That's the composite functions that f has swallowed, I should say, has eaten the g. Now we are just going to talk about the different way. What's happening if g of x is going to be much stronger and swallows, I should say, the f of x? Which it means that in that scenario, I'm just going to have g of, let's say, g of f of x, which it means that I'm just going to walk along, I should say, the equation. And wherever I see x, I put what? I put f of x. You see that g of x has x there. Then it becomes f of x minus 5. Then what's going to happen? I'm going to do this one. What is f of x? I'm going to put the explicit format of the f of x f of x is going to be 4 divided by x. And I have minus 5 there. Which it means that I can simplify that further. And I write it like that. I take the common denominator as the x. I have 4 here. And I end up here with minus 6x. Which equals to do what? Equals to... I take, I can take x to the numerator because that's the basic laws that we have seen. It becomes x divided by 4 minus 6x. That's essentially, this one also, we can write it as what? We can write it as, let's say, we can write it as G O F. We end up to this very final answer. Everyone is doing fine? Yes. Everyone? Oh, okay. Fantastic. Let me also ask, uh, how about Diana, Allison, Jesse, and Robin, and Bo? Everyone is doing great? Yes. No yes. questions? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. If no one has a question, it seems that we can move to the next slides. Then now that we know about, I should say, uh, the composite of functions, now it becomes the time we go back to the R initial, I should say, discussions that we just wanted to run first which it was supposed to be, we were supposed to talk about the inverse of the function. Now we just got here. Inverse of the function. Okay. <clears throat>
Okay, guys, have you had that concept before? I mean, the concepts of the inverse function. You had it before, or that's the first time you're seeing it? Uh, if you can write an equation, maybe I can remember it. Okay, sure. Let me introduce the concept because it doesn't have a main equation, but let me explain the concept. Okay. Guys, oh, not this one. I'm not looking for this. Oh, I'm looking for this. Guys, remember that. When we talk about, I should say, of a function, we said that when we talk about the functions, we have, for example, we have some uh, elements which they define the domain of the function. And at the same time, we can think of, for example, some elements in the range of the function. It shares as a kind of a domain. It defines the range of a function. And what was a function definitely that we talked about that in this course, it was something like that. We said that we pick up an element in the domain of the function. Then we have a machinery. We can just do a magic and transform it into another element, which it constitutes as a range of that function. This machinery that we had here to make this transformation, it was called F. F stands as the initial for the function. Then here we say what? Here we say that the F of, for example, this element equals to this element. That's what we meant by the function. So far, so good, huh? That's what we have done before. Then look at this. The method that we have used here in the definition of the function, it was in such a way that, for example, for also for the other unit, we had to, for example, for this one, we pick up one element from the domain and we take it to the another element inside the range. This is the direction, this is a forward direction. I call that a kind of what? A kind of a forward transformation. I call this one, it's a kind of a, for, F is a kind of a forward transformation. Right? Because why this is forward? Because we are moving forward in the way that the nature has designed us to just move. We just go from the domain going to the range of the function. However, we can reverse the things. We can move backward. But what do I mean that we can just move backward? Imagine that now. Now I'm here at one of the elements in the range of a function. Now I just want to jump back to the domain, which includes that star. You see that? This one is said to be a kind of a backward. Transformation. Does it make sense to everyone what happened there between forward and backward? Yeah. Yeah? Look at this. The function which I said has a forward transformation. F has a forward transformation. I just write it's forward. And I can just find another method to show the backward transformation. What is a backward transformation for me is this. Look at this. I say that F of 
Now, you see that I started from the cross, then I transformed it into a star. This is called what? This is called backward or inverse. I could have written here for the backward also inverse, which both are the same thing. But mostly in math, this is, this is established that to use the word of the inverse. But however, there is a trick here. Look at this one. For this transformation which I had here, for the forward transformation, the functions which I had, it was f, and also the name of the function which assists me to find it backward on inverse transformation, it is also f. And it's gonna be a little bit confusing. For example, there are gonna be two brothers, two twin brothers. You have to distinguish them. How to distinguish the forward and the backward or inverse transformation is that simply I put one minus one on top of the inverse transformation. Minus one. But I have to note to you that the minus one which I have here, it's not an exponent. What do I mean? I mean that if you have f minus one of the x, you should not write it as inverse of the f of x. It doesn't mean like that. It means the inverse, which is not the inverse exponents of the function. Everyone is clear about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Guys, then, we are taking a very interesting steps in our journey today, and we are saying that if we have a function, we can look as a function as a forward transformation. It's as if that, for example, right now, you just want to go to a college. Imagine that the COVID-19 is eventually over and we are just back to normal life. You can just walk, I should say, to the college or you can come back. You go to the college in the morning for your, for example, for your math 11 course class. Then you come back to the home from college, it becomes your backward, I should say, journey then. That's essentially what we do with the functions. Sometimes we move forward and sometimes we move backward. Okay. And that's going to be uh, the topic of the forward transformation or backward or inverse transformation. And particularly, we talked about the notations for the backward which is different from having an exponent as minus one. Okay, now. Then from this slide that you saw, you see essentially that the backward transformation also itself is a function. Now, how to find the backward transformation? We are just gonna develop a formula to talk about the backward transformation. There is a couple of strategy that we are gonna talk about the backward transformation. With the backward transformation, uh, sorry, inverse function. Let me write inverse function. Strategy. Okay, step number one. Step number one, for the inverse function that you just want to obtain, let me also, uh, in the inverse function is that, the thing that you do is that you, uh, let, me, let me start with the easiest step that I can think of. Okay, with the first step is that you do, you, you write the function, in order of f of 
y equals to f of x. What does it mean? It means that, for example, I'm just going to also give you functions that at each step, I'm just going to follow that and show you what's going to happen. On the right side of the whiteboard, I'm just going to introduce a functions, for example. I'm just going to say, imagine that I have a function that f of x is going to be, let's say, 2x squared plus x minus 1. This is going to be the, the quadratic functions which I have as a function. Okay. I'm just going to follow with step number one. Step number one, what's going to happen? I'm going to write step number one. Step number one, it says what to do. It says that the functions that you have, you have to write this in this format y equals to f of x. It means that I come here in the functions which I have, I simply replace f of x with y and I write y equals to 2x squared plus x minus 1. It's going to be step number one. Simply in order to follow the step number one, I simply replaced f of x with the y, and the rest is a function of the x. It's going to be step number one. Okay. Step number two. Step number two is that replace, let me say, exchange or replace x with y and y with x what does it mean here the thing which i have written here it means that for example from the last steps which you have which is going to be this function in order to go to step number three i write it as a step number three step number two it means that whenever you just walk from left to right, anywhere you see y, you call it x. For example, it means that between, for example, imagine between Diana and Allison. Wherever you see Allison, you, you, you name Allison Diana, and whenever you see Diana, you call her Allison. You exchange their names. That's easy as that. Then it means that I come here and x is going to be transformed to, y is going to be transformed to the x. Then I just move on. I have 2. Then I have x. I have, replace it with y squared plus. Okay, let's, guys, let me, let me, I just want to make it a little bit, I should say, for the first example, easier. That I showed that to you. That's why I'm just going to erase one, uh, one of the elements there then I have minus one. Because with the x, I didn't want to make it a little bit confusing on the first example, just I want to show what's the process, not to get involved into too much unnecessary calculation. Then step number two is this. Step number two is finished. Wherever I saw, I should say y, I replaced it to the x, and wherever I saw x, I replaced it to the y. Now, I'm just going to go to step number three. Step number three is going to be find y in terms of x. Now, what does it mean in step number three? Find y in terms of the x. Okay, look at this. For step number three, I'm just going to continue from step number two. It means that find y in terms of the x. For example, like the functions which you have always, like y equals to f of x, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to express only y in terms of the x. It means now I have y. 
in order to do that, I'm just going to do some kind of, I should say, uh, some sort of calculations. Then in order to do that, I'm just going to take one to the other side. Then it changes its sign, then becomes plus. Then I have x plus one. What happens then to the other side? I have still two times of the y squared. In order to express y in terms of the x, x, what do I do? I see that I can simply divide both sides to the two. Then what do I get? I have, I can write it here like that. I write y squared should be equal to what? Should be equal to x plus one divided by two. Does it make sense so far, guys? Yeah. Now, from here, it's gonna be very easy in terms of to express y in terms of the x, y is to the power of one. Then in order to express only y, I'm just gonna write it only like that. To take the square root of both sides, and I write y equals to square root of x plus one divided by two. Right? And now I'm just gonna to go to step number four, the final step. Step four, the final step is that replace y with uh, f minus f, uh, I do not have, let me see, f minus one of the x. F to the power of my F minus one, I do not have the, the I should say, uh, the capacity on the, the whiteboard to show this symbol, but this symbol essentially means this. means that this one, it means f minus one of the x. Okay. If that's going to be like that, I'm just going to come here and very safely say, okay, now I'd replace y, which I have here based on step number four, with f minus of x. I haven't done anything except I replaced with something different. And the right side, which I have, it remains by itself, which it means that it becomes equal to square root of x plus one divided by two. Okay. And essentially, when we are at this stage, we love this equation very much because it's gonna be the inverse function of our function. Okay, guys, before we go for our first break, I'm just going to review what I have done here with you. When we come back, we explore more of the things which is going to be relevant for, I should say, the squared functions. The first, in order to find, on the previous slide, we talked about what does it mean to talk about a backward transformation or the inverse function based on these diagrams which we had. In order to analytically find the inverse of a function, we had four easy steps to do. Imagine the functions which I have. The functions which I have is this one, f of x, 2x squared minus 1. Step number one, it says that when you start with your function, simply replace f of x with y. 
It's the easiest step you can ever think of in the whole entire map that you are going to be exposed with. Simply change f of x with y and rewrite the rest of the function. Step number two, it says that now, whenever you see a step number two, y, call it x. Whenever you see x, call it y. As the example which I said between our son and Diana, whenever the school is open, when you go back to school, you can call, whenever you see Allison, call it Diana, or wherever you see Diana, call it Allison. That's what we did. We replace wherever we see x, we put, wherever we see y, we put x. Wherever we see x, we put y. Then y equals to 2x squared plus minus 1, or minus 1. It becomes x equals to 2 times y squared minus 1. Okay. Step number 3, it's normally the step which requires some minor math. We say that now that we have this one, look at step number two equation, this one. As an equation that you want to find what is y, like for example, the expression that we had. You isolate y in one side of the equation with power one and coefficient one. That's the strategy for step number one, which it means that isolate one isolate y in one side of the equation with power one and coefficient one. In order to do that, it's very easy. I see that if I take one to the other side, divide both sides by two, I get y squared. I'm halfway done because the coefficients of the y is one, but the power which it has is two. It has to change the power one that's why I take the square root of both sides, which it takes x plus 1 divided by 2 under the roof of the square operator. So far, so good, guys. Everyone is fine? Yes, yeah, good. Fantastic. And for the very last step, in order to not confuse the y which I have here, which the y which I had at step number 2, I recall this because I was looking for the inverse of the function. I come here and say that I call my notation of the inverse of the functions, which is f minus 1 of the x. And I rewrite the rest of the equation as the way it is, which is the square root of x plus 1 divided by 2. And this one, which is surrounded by these hearts, is mean that that's what we like. And that's the inverse of the function. We started with this function. As the in forward, we moved to the inverse by these four steps. Four easier steps, honestly. Please go back to my slide. When we are done with this lesson, you can see how these things work then. Okay, guys, any questions? No. Everyone is fine. Lee is fine. Yes, good. Thanks, Lee. How about Allison? Yes. How He's about fine. Diana? Allison, you said that you're fine? Yes, teacher. Awesome. How about Bo? Yeah, I'm good. So, so. Fantastic. How about Robin? Yeah, yeah. I know. Pretty good. And how about Diana? Yeah. You're fine, Diana? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm so glad to hear it. Guys, the thing that you're just going to do right now is that now you're going to take a break. It's now 121. Please come back by 131. Then we continue with some very beautiful things to discover. Then. Okay. Take 10 minutes break. I see you guys back. Oh, Jesse, are you, you are also joined us. Jesse, do you have a question? In, uh, no. Are you fine? I'm fine. Sorry, I didn't see that because you joined. I think a little bit late. I didn't notice that you are in the class. And my apologies then. I'm sorry, teacher. No worries. But you're okay. You have no questions off the math, huh? Yes. 
Okay, fantastic, Jesse. I'm so proud of all of you. Then now, uh, please come back by uh, 1.31, 10 minutes break. We continue from there. Then. I'm back. Oh, thanks, Dinah. You're back. Thank you. Okay, now. Let's continue with the thing that we did, and hopefully today we should be able to finish the concepts of, I should say, of the inverse functions, not just about the quadratic functions, but in more general sense about, I should say, uh, uh, every, every function. That's a general, I should say, uh, discussion that we have. In the textbook, you see only for the quadratic functions, but you're going to use these definitions all the way up to, I should say, uh, the advanced functions or advanced placement calculus that you're going to have later. Okay. Now, the thing which I want to do, we are going to draw a very interesting characteristics. I'm just going to write here, inverse functions, uh, what can I write for it? Inverse function mm, property. I'm going to find property number one. Okay. And what is that going to be? In order to in, get the property number one of the inverse function, I'm just going to, guys, give you one example to do that. Look at this one which we had here. We have the forward transformation. It was represented as this. We had f of x. It was, what was that? It was 2x squared minus 1. I'm going to, guys, I'm going to, I'm using the exact example that we just uh, did that before we just go for the break. Our forward transformation was f of x, 2x squared minus 1. Our backward transformation was square root of x plus 1 divided by 2. Then also, I know that the f minus 1 of the x, it's square root of x plus 1 divided by 2. Am I correct? That's right. Again, guys, I emphasize here. For the, I'm just going to emphasize here that minus one that you, you, you see here is not an exponent. I'm just going to write that again for you, that where I say f minus one of the x, I do not mean the inverse, numerical inverse of the x. Definitely, that's not what I do mean. It means that the backward transformation. Okay, now we have these two functions. In order to draw the first property, I'm just gonna do something. I'm just gonna come here and say, what happens if I do this? I say f o, f minus, f inverse of the x. What's gonna happen there? We, we learned about these processes. We said that this one that we learned that at the beginning of this session, by saying this, essentially we are saying that f has swelled, I should say, has eaten, I should say, inverse of the x. That's what we meant about the composite functions. Then it meant what? It meant that wherever we see on the f of the x, we replace it with the f prime of the x. It means that now it becomes, turns out to be 2 times for this one. I'm just going to write, I should say, f inverse of the x. To the power 2 minus 1. You see, because we have x squared here, because you see that when we have x here and it's squared, when you replace it with the f inverse of the x, that's what it should look like. You may wonder, 
why do not I explicitly put f inverse of the x instead of the x another? That means that I have to write two. And f inverse of the x is expressed in this configuration. Then it means that I put square root of x plus one divided by two going to the power two minus one. Which, what do I get at the end? It's going to be very easy to compute this one. We just start with these exponents which I have. And I'm just taking the exponent inside the parentheses. And you know that when you do the exponent inside the parentheses, it eliminates, I should say, the square root. then you are end up with this. Now, the thing which happens here, we have two here, we have two. When you multiply them, you get rid of them and you get x plus one, you have minus one, then as a final answer, you get x. Is it clear for everyone what we did? Yeah. I simply just try to use, I should say, the composition of the function with its own inverse. And I saw that the result is going to be this. Now, I'm going to draw some, I should say, put some border because I'm going to do another calculations. I need the same space at the same page. That's why I create these boundaries in order to not mix my work with the other things which I have done. Okay. Now, guys, I hope that all of you followed exactly what we did. We tried to find the compositions of F with its own inverse of the x, which it means that the f has eaten f inverse of the x, then we followed the same things which we did algebraically. Please let me know if you have any problems with this process. Everyone is fine? Yeah, it's fine. Awesome, thanks. And now, here what I did. The thing which I did here, it was I used f of f inverse of the x. Right now, f has taken, has eaten f inverse. Now the thing which I'm going to do is going to be something different. I'm going to say what happens if inverse of the f composes with f of x, which it means that f inverse has eaten f of x. That's going to be the other side of the composite functions of a function with its own inverse. I had now here on the top f composition of f inverse. Now I have f inverse composition of f f. You see that now in the stomach of the function is now f of x. Now what's going to happen? I'm just going to continue and write it. And I'm just going to write f inverse. I'm just going to put, I should say, f of x. What is going to be my f of x? My f of x is explicitly has shown here, which is 2 times x squared minus 1. And where I'm at this stage, I notice that it's going to become very easy because I can take whatever I have. I can look at this as the example of an apple which we had before and take it inside the F inverse. Wherever I see X, I put it there, there. Which it means that it becomes what? It becomes F inverse is expressed as this function. But for, in terms of the X, I put this term to 
x squared minus 1. Correct? And also, I notice that I have also a plus 1. I put the plus 1 from here, and I have divided by 2. Okay, what's going to happen now? The thing which is going to happen here is this. Look at these two terms. I have minus 1 plus 1 equal but opposite signs. It means that you are just going to get eliminated. Then I'm going to end up with this expression. I'm going to have 2x squared divided by 2, correct? Which, if I take a look, closer look, I see that I have 2. I have 2. I can remove them. Then I end up only with this one, square root of x squared. What is the square root of x squared? Anybody knows square root of x squared? Uh, it's x. That's right. It becomes x. Square root of x squared becomes x. Why, for example, I go to the next page to show that something to you. Imagine that. Imagine x is going to be 2. Square root of 2 to the power 2 becomes what? becomes 2, which is the x itself. Then as a result, we see that square root of x squared, it has to be x. Later, when you see the absolute value functions, you will see that you have to put that inside the term, which shows that it's absolute value. Nonetheless, we come back and we just make our first conclusion of the course and if you see that, this one is x. Let me bring my hearts. Guys, look at this one. I have heart here, I have heart here. Is it, do you think this is accidental that the f composition of f inverse is x and f inverse composition of f is again x? Do you think this is accidental no that's right it's not accidental let me erase these ones this is the property number one that we are gonna i should say talk about that before we go to the property number two property number one is this Property one of the inverse function. Property number one is going to be this. For number one, we say this one, that F inverse composition of F of X, it's always equals to now, the f composition of f inverse of the x. And for all of them, it's going to be always equals to x. That's going to be property number one of the inverse of a function. Guys, any questions so far, particularly from the... Uh, the notations which I have here, the calculations which I have here. Any questions so far? No. No. Everybody's fine? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. How about Bo, Diana, Allison, and Robin? And Jesse? Yeah, I understand. Everyone is doing great? Yes. Fantastic. I'm so glad and so proud of you guys. Okay, now. We are going to go then, before we just do try to do some exercises to, uh, to improve our learning today, I'm going to talk about the property number two of inverse functions, 
which is going to be about a symmetry, symmetrical property with respect to x axis. Okay. But before we talk about, I should say, the symmetrical property, what do I mean? Let me, maybe it's going to be your first time that you are uh, listening about the symmetry. Let's talk about, I should say, symmetry. What is symmetry? I'm going to give you some examples first. Okay. Imagine the line which I have drawn here. It is a mirror. And what's the mirror is essentially like that. If you, you are standing in front of the mirror, for example, you are standing here, it's me standing in front of the mirror. You see, probably you should have seen that on the elementary physics that when you're standing in front of the mirror, your image has the similar distance from you. For example, if I choose randomly three, I should say three points, spots on my head, you see that, for example, my image also looks like me. I say that this is going to be my image. And this is going to be me. Okay. You see, when you see at the basic physics, when you are standing in front of the mirror, you see exactly yourself. You do not see yourself getting bigger or getting smaller. You look far or you look close. The reason is that the distance that you are, you have in front of the mirror is essentially is the same thing for the distance that you have behind the mirror. Then. And that's the reason. That is why we say that the mirror image is symmetric. Another example, I just want to show that to you. Look at, for example, this axis. With this axis, which I have, for example, imagine this is going to be the x axis, it's going to be the minus x axis, and that's probably is going to be the origin. Then. If I have a point, and I call my point here, for example, point A. It's point A. In order to find a symmetry with respect to this axis, what you do, you come here, you take your ruler, you just draw a line, which creates a 90 degrees with this line, then you come to measure this line. You say that the line which I have drawn, it is, for example, two centimeter. Huh? A symmetric point with respect to this point is going to be the same thing. You are going to come in here again on the other side of the x-axis. You use your ruler. You go again to this point. Again, this one is also two centimeter and this one also is normal to this line we call this point a prime what we say we say that a and a prime are symmetric and Axis x minus x, the axis you have, it is called the line of symmetry. Does it make sense to everyone? Yeah. As a final example, look at this example. Imagine that, for example, I have a Cartesian coordinate. 
And at the same time, I'm going to draw a line, which is going to be, for example, a simple line. It's going to be y equals to x. Let me name this line which I have. I'm just going to line this, name this one. It's going to be y equals to plus x. We have worked with these lines before, huh? Okay. Look at this one. In the previous example, which I showed that to you, you have, for example, a line, it becomes symmetric with any arbitrary line, x, x minus. I'm gonna do the same thing here, exactly the same thing, but now you see also the Cartesian coordinates. What do I mean? For example, you have a point. You call your point here, for example, B. In order to find the symmetry with respect to y equals to x, Again, you take out your ruler, you draw a line, you make sure that your line is the shortest one because it's normal. Then you take out your ruler and you say, okay, the distance from here to there, for example, is anything. It's, for example, five centimeter. It can be anything. It can be two meters, 100 yards, anything. Then you continue with that. You say that, okay, then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna move on with this one. I'm gonna go on with the same thing. I march another five meters or five centimeters. And also I'm sure that this one also has to be normal. Then the point which you get here, B prime is gonna be a symmetric to B and the y equals to x is gonna be a line of symmetry. Does it make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. And now guys, the thing which I'm gonna do, we have only five minutes, I need three minutes to finish the lesson today, but to demonstrate something to you. On the previous slide, as a property number two of inverse function, what did I say? I said that, a function with its inverse functions are symmetric to a line. But before I move on, let me, let me also uh, show that to you as long as we have less than five minutes left. Imagine again the same scenario. We are not going to talk about, I should say, uh, symmetric points. We are going to talk about from the points, we are going to go to the graphs. Imagine if this line is a line. If y equals to x is going to be a line of symmetry, you do the same thing. For each point in the graph, you'd find the symmetric points on the other side. For each point, you find the symmetry on the other side. For each point, you find a symmetry on the other side. And the thing which I did. Then you come here to connect these points together. Then this plot is symmetric with respect to this plot. Does it make sense? Yes. For example, this line becomes the mirror, y equals to x, becomes the mirror of these two plots. Like exactly, they are seeing it ourselves in that mirror there. Very quickly, I'm just going to go to uh, the slides which I had. Let me write the functions which we had. It was 2x squared. If you please bear, me, bear with me for one second. I'm going to finish the lesson just in less than one minute. 2x squared minus 1, square root of x plus 1 divided by 2. I'm just going to stop the share and very quickly go to share that with you on the things which I have for the Desmos. Okay, guys, everybody, everybody can see the shared Desmos, which I have on my desktop? Yes. Awesome. Guys, look at that. The first functions which I had, the examples which we talked about, the first function was 2x squared minus 1, correct? 
The second functions which I had, it was f inverse of the x, I call that g of x. Was what? Was the square root, you can write sqrt, x plus 1 divided by 2. Okay? And now, I'm going to also write this function, y equals to x. We do not work, on, I should say, on the other side that the x is minus, because if the x is going to be minus, then g of x is not going to be defined for values greater than minus 1, because under the square root is going to be negative. But guys, only look at these two parts of the graph, which I have it for you. Look at the green line is y equals to x. The blue line is the inverse function. And the red line is going to be the forward function. You can see that the blue line can be as a mirror image with, to the red line with respect to the y equals to x and vice versa. Can you see that? Yes. That's right. In the first quadrant, the thing that we see is that the green line is the line of the symmetry. The red line is the forward functions. The blue line is the inverse function. And that's essentially true for all the functions. Then we say that any function with its own inverse is always symmetrical with respect to the y equals to x. Then these are the two properties that we just wanted to cover today with respect to a forward function and inverse function. Does it make sense to everyone? Can you feel this? Tomorrow we are going to talk more about this, but I wanted today to give you a kind of a feeling that what does it mean inverse and forward and how do they are related in the plotting. Everyone is doing fine. Any questions? No questions. Tom, no questions? Yeah. Robin? Bo? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Allison? No <clears throat> Diana? No question. And Jesse? Okay. Guys, if you have no questions, it's not right sharp two. We can finish the class right now. Then when we come back tomorrow, we continue with the inverse functions, but just for the quadratic functions. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. You can access to the slides and the video lectures just in just a couple of hours on the Schoology website. If you have no questions, guys, have a nice day and see you all tomorrow then. Okay, see you. Thank yeah. you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.